Hello Watch Enthusiasts and welcome to Watch Chronicler. 2020 has been a seriously turbulent year for the watch industry, as indeed for every industry. However, it's also been one of the most exciting years in recent memory, with truly stunning releases in sports and dress watch fields, even without Baselworld and Watches and Wonders as the standard trade shows. As a result, I'd like to mark the end of 2020 with my customary set of awards to celebrate some of the most interesting, impressive, and perhaps even under-discussed new options for a watch lover. Before all of that though, I must thank you all for watching throughout the year and for making Watch Chronicler a real pleasure to write, record, edit and publish. I look forward to putting out plenty more content in 2021 for you to enjoy. With that in mind, please do remember to like, subscribe and comment, as well as following us on Instagram. Head over to watchchronicler.com to read all of our best content and to listen to Watch Chronicler Unscripted, our dedicated podcast discussing various matters within the industry and some rather interesting interviews with some leading lights in some very new directions within the watch industry. But without any further ado, it's time to begin with the awards. Whilst the watch industry displays an awful lot of technology, it would be a real overstatement to say that technical advancement is at the centre of it. Nevertheless, when a watch comes along with a new level of technology which, crucially, will have far-reaching consequences, you do have to respect the achievement. This, in my opinion, is the case with the new line of Grand Seiko spring drive movements, as shown in the Grand Seiko 60th Anniversary Professional Diver 600m SLGA001, which houses the new spring drive calibre 9RA5. The dive watch itself is a very striking piece in Seiko's own high-intensity titanium, with a 600 meter water resistance, and as ever, stunning finishing, with a unique design. Its movement, however, really is the area which defines this watch's technological contribution to the watch industry as a whole. The 9R A5 is a new era for spring drive, with two asymmetrical spring barrels being used to flatten the movement, whilst extending the power reserve to a full five days. In the endeavour of thinness, the iconic magic lever automatic winding system has been redesigned to be moved outward and to accommodate the longer power reserve, something usually impossible with this particular technology. Aside from thickness, the new movement will be a more competent timekeeper with a more shock-resistant gear train, as well as a level of thermocompensation from within the sealed quartz module at the centre of this combination of mechanical and quartz technology. The result is a mechanical feel with accuracy of plus or minus 10 seconds per month, and a general design which is far more in keeping with modern technology than Grand Seiko's first generation, you could say, spring drive movements. History is, it must be admitted, an overused concept amongst watches. An awful lot of timepieces are given connotations of importance to the overall story of watches, yet so few actually do. Consequently, my pick for this title is a watch dismissed by many when released, but which strikes me as an interesting signpost for design in coming years. The Bulgari Aluminium is a piece which may be familiar to those who enjoyed this brand in the 1990s, as in 1998, the Aluminium was launched as a quartz watch and chronograph with an ultralight case in the obvious material. This year, rather contrary to the ultra-high-end Octofinissimo models pushed by the brand of late, Bulgari have relaunched the collection with extremely well-finished ETA movements and a seriously exciting construction in aluminium, with titanium and a rubber coating used in areas where this comparably soft metal might suffer from the abuse of daily use. The bracelet is a mix of aluminium and hinged rubber pieces, which creates an interesting hybrid of elegance and durability on an essentially perfect summer watch with 100 meter water resistance. With dial options in black and cream, I think this watch is historically important simply because it proves that a brand can draw from its history with an iconic design instead of creating a throwback to a past period. This is a simple concept, yet one remarkably alien to rather a lot of brands. It's also a piece which, whilst not cheap, doesn't need to justify itself with features, but rather is simply an attractive and exciting release. These factors add up to it perhaps creating a place in the industry for a quirky, fashion-conscious watch, which remains acceptable to the usual watch-collecting crowd. Each year, I give one award to the most bizarre product of that time. Usually this is an undeniably negative title, which has previously been awarded to the ridiculous $70,000 Doxa Sub 200 Tigroth in 18 karat gold, and Zinn's absurd strap for wearing an Apple Watch and a conventional watch on each side of the same wrist. This year though, the nominations would be the Doxa Sub 300 Carbon, another misjudged dive watch with an enormous price tag, now selling for around half its original retail value, and the Ralph Lauren Automatic Chronograph, 
a watch which combines the strange design you would expect to find under £200 with a movement made bespoke by JLC and a £9,000 price tag. The winner, however, is the thoroughly exciting MWT Royal Marine MI6 010A. This limited edition homage to the 1970s Rolex Submariner is, aside from being a stunningly accurate alternative to the original, a near-perfect remake of the sub worn by Roger Moore in Live and Let Die. By using a quartz movement set from a pusher in the centre of the case back, this watch has a serrated bezel which rotates with the inner case including the crystal, dial and movement, and which is secured in place at 12 o'clock with the crown. This watch recreates pretty much the exact construction, excluding of course the motor, of the saw watch used by Bond to escape from Kananga in the climax of that well-known film. Of course, you have to put up with a fairly pedestrian movement and lesser water resistance of 100 metres, yet it remains the most faithful way to relive the action of that particular movie scene. It's a bizarre watch by any standard, but recreating even the pinhole in the original bracelet end piece, it's a really rather cool one too. The best vintage-inspired watch of 2020 is perhaps no real surprise. We've seen rather a lot of such watches with the Longine Marine Nationale, Hanhart 417ES and the Masséna Lab Uniracer being three noteworthy examples. However, no watch could ever really expect to beat the 2020 Omega Speedmaster 321 Ed White. You see, what's most important about this watch is that it presents one prong of the newfound three-part Speedmaster collection, an iconic part of the centre of Omega's range. Now that the current Speedmaster Professional has been discontinued in favour of, it's rumoured, a manually wound coaxial version with a step dial, applied logo and some other revisions, the Omega Speedmaster collection will be split into ultra-modern coaxial automatic models, the new coaxial professional and high-end vintage-inspired versions including the new largely handmade Calibre 321. By scanning an original 1960s example, Omega have perfectly recreated the legendary 321 column wheel chronograph movement which took the brand to the moon in 1969. Now, however, it's encased in a near-perfect remake of Ed White's reference 105.003 with a ceramic bezel and an exhibition case back to show modern luxury finishing. The result is clearly expensive, but might just be the perfect Speedmaster for a true enthusiast and just the watch for Omega to use their vintage flair and their vintage appeal to take on watches, to take on watches like the Rolex Daytona. The most surprising release of the year could have been won by so many brands. Ming have created some truly stunning watches, and the products of H, Moser and C have been strikingly unusual too. Still, the watch which I reckon deserves this title is one which introduced a level of complication, fun and versatility to what I see as the de facto king of value luxury dress watches, the JLC Master Control Chronograph Calendar 2020. Since its inception in the 1990s, the JLC Master Control has been a forward-thinking, high-tech watch with a completely reserved attitude to showing off. I'd suggest that, as a collection, it's far more of a gentleman's watch than a Rolex Oyster with the inevitable prejudice encountered by the Coronet. Revised earlier this year, JLC have given us a new interpretation which will no doubt satisfy the businessman, the enthusiast and the gentleman in one package. Combining for the first time a moon phase with a complete calendar and chronograph, this 40mm piece is, first and foremost, a dress watch. Nevertheless, for a price comparable to a Rolex Daytona, it gives the owner true luxury, superlative quality, and a very clever movement. The Calibre 759 is an automatic chronograph with the aforementioned complications, in addition to a thousand hours of testing, a 65 hour power reserve, and a very clever vertical clutch column wheel chronograph too. This was, if any kind of surprise, an extremely pleasant one. Plenty of watches in 2020 have been received with a truly staggering level of enthusiasm and with very good reason. The Omega Speedmaster Ed White with a 321 movement is a remarkable return, the new Rolex Submariner has been very long awaited, and the Tudor Black Bay 58 Navy Blue was a pleasant extension of an already popular line. The watch which wins this award though is a piece which has shown a remarkable sense of humour from a brand usually known for having none. This is the 2020 Rolex Oyster Perpetual. Aside from the obvious and necessary movement update in this, the most simple of Rolex watches, these pieces take the bright colours of 1970s stellar dial models. 
with these watches it also disappears the 39mm case in favour of 36 and 41mm versions, which should allow a broader swathe of the market to enjoy such pieces. Aside from the bright dialed versions, more subtle dials in silver with golden accents or in black give a timeless, perhaps even vintage feel to this watch, and also makes it all the Rolex you might want unless you have a particular interest in one of their more specialised models. Altogether, with a reasonable price, a new movement, the choice of eccentric or rather 60s conservative dials, these watches make a Rolex a more approachable choice for a new buyer, even if with rising prices, the risk of theft and of long waiting lists, other models, particularly sports models, have often made buying a Rolex a seemingly hostile proposition. Where best value of the year is concerned, there were a few options to choose from due to the ever unclear nature of this epithet. Take, for example, the Oleg and Weiss C1000, which gives you unparalleled Swiss value for the price, whilst the Seiko King Turtle is potentially the best value dive watch on the market. Nevertheless, the Victor has to be the Longines Spirit, a pilot's watch which has shown a different and very well balanced side to this historic Swiss brand. The Longines Spirit is an unusual watch, because in spite of the industry trend to regularly add a thousand pounds to the price of a well-known model due to a technical improvement, the Spirit gives a silicon spring, a long 64-hour power reserve, and a level of finishing extremely reminiscent of Omega for under half the price. This is also a watch which understands that past designs don't need to be imitated entirely just to give a sense of continuity to aesthetics. In this regard, it combines some vintage cues with more modern elements to create an elegant but extremely well-made watch for an essentially unbeatable price. For these reasons, it's very difficult to put forward any other timepiece for this title. The most spectacular watch of 2020 is perhaps an obvious choice, yet still very much a deserving one, the Ferdinand Berthoud Chronometre FB2RE. Many of you will not have heard of Ferdinand Berthoud and I, I must confess, wasn't particularly inspired by their work before this watch, despite its undeniable quality. With the Chronometre FB2RE, however, this brand has shown finishing which I would suggest goes beyond even our Lange and Zöhner. Housed within a stunning 44mm case in white or pink gold, with the customary portholes to show the movement sides, this watch recreates the brand's own marine clock number 6 from the 18th century. Particularly in white, the watch's grand feu enamel dial over an anti-magnetic steel base is achingly beautiful. The movement, though, is what truly amazes. Manually wound and running at a slow 2.5Hz, the caliber FBRE FC is an exercise in absolutely constant timekeeping. With movement plates supported by little columns as on a traditional chronometer movement, the case back gives a view of the fusée chain, which uncoiling as the spring winds down, and anchored, rather unusually, at only one end, changes the gearing and keeps a constant torque level for the movement. Then, a unique stop work halts the release of energy after 50 hours to avoid a suboptimal torque level to maintain that level of accuracy which this watch prides itself for. Finally, an exquisitely finished remontoire housed on a ruby cam releases energy in equal chunks to the escapement and finally to those deadbeat seconds on the dial. This might just be the most spectacular display of watchmaking I've ever witnessed, with some truly superb decoration on the movement and level of finish which many have described as simply flawless. For the first of my two personal choices, which consequently requires little to no objective justification, could have been one of a few watches. I love and respect the superlative craftsmanship of the Atelier de Chronometrie ADC8, as well as the H. Moser Streamliner in all its forms. However, the piece which I have to give the award to is a real gem from Cartier. This is the Cartier Santos Dumont La Demoiselle, the highest level model in Cartier's quartet of watches to celebrate the aeronautical pioneer Alberto Santos Dumont. Taking its name from the series of vehicles to become the first practical ultralight aircraft, the Demoiselle is a spiritual celebration of all that made this Brazilian icon. In this regard, this watch is a collection of clues about the man with, like the original watch given to this pioneer in 1904 as the first pilot's watch, a polished bezel and perm hands. The more eagle-eyed viewers will also notice the ruby cabochon signalling the use of platinum for the case, the replacement of secret Cartier script on the seven numeral with the word Santos, and perhaps even an allusion to Dumont's coffee-growing origins 
in the brown minute track. Most touchingly, the pilot's Panama hat is recreated in the dial center and in the strap. Holding inside a manual Piaget movement rebranded by Cartier, this watch has charm oozing from every component and wins the contest for my favorite dress watch of 2020 with ease, courtesy of the sheer allure of its design as well as the story behind it. Over the last few years, my love for sports watches has grown to encompass a very broad range of options, but I can't deny being truly spoilt this year. Grand Seiko launched a 600m dive watch with their brand new spring drive calibre, Ole Weiss presented the C1000, a beautiful and very well priced 1000m dive watch, yet only one watch can win this award for me, the Aquastar Deep Star 2020. Launched by Rick Murray and the Synchron Group, both of whom previously managed the Doxa brand, albeit at different times, this is the beginning of a remake of the Aquastar Deep Star, the first widely viable diving chronograph, and the watch which accompanied much of Jacques Cousteau's team in their subaquatic adventures between 1965 and about 1975. This alone would be enough to make me enthusiastic about such a product, yet it's the execution which has really taken me by surprise. The watch is a comprehensive remake of a timepiece which, let's face it, is no longer at the cutting edge of diving equipment, partly due to the receding technical relevance of such a product, and partly due to its 100m water resistance and manual movement. In modern form, the watch has grown to a modern 40mm size, and now uses a Le Jouperet automatic column wheel chronograph movement. Despite these changes to make a more timeless piece, with a 200m water resistance most notably, this watch feels like a more successful product than any of Doxa or Aquadive's most recent pieces, yet has more spirit than Nomega Seamaster 300, for example. The result is a dive watch which I really have fallen for this year. Anyway, I must now conclude this video, but let me know what you think of my choices for this rather eclectic array of awards. Like some of the best aspects of enjoying watches, opinion is everything, so please give me your nominations below and I'll let you know what I think. Please remember to like, share and subscribe, as it really helps to keep the videos coming. Thank you very much for watching, this is Armon from WatchChronicle.com, out.